Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Revelation Revealed Ministry, a ministry designed to explain truth in all its fullest. I'm Pastor Herlock, your host, and I'm so delighted to be with you tonight. As I thought about it, I um, think this week will be the last of uh, May, the last week in May, and of course, it will be the end of our ninth or eight months on the air. Eighth month on the air. Time flies so fast. But this Friday evening, you have opened your hearts and your home to receive the word of God. And I just hope that for the past nine or eight months, you have been truly blessed by the sermons, the uh, concerts, the interviews, and then so on and so on. And we have much more for you. We are trying our best to improve our program and to, to give you the best that we can. Now, I want to remind you of a few dates. Next week, Friday evening, don't you miss it. We will have Pastor Lee, a survivor from the Cambodian um, Holocaust, I would call it that way. Uh, two million people were killed, and he is one that was saved and is here to tell the rest of the story. He will be on the third. Also, we uh, continue the second part um, on June the 10th. So June the 3rd and also June the 10th. And then on the 17th, we'll have Pastor Sean Ellis, a young pastor, a vibrant pastor from the Apple Creek Church here in Toronto. You just can't miss these great speakers. And uh, after the 17th, I will let you know the rest of the programs um, for the ensuing months ahead. I will tell you what is coming. God bless you, and I hope that you have a wonderful sitting tonight. Shall we pray? Gracious God and our Father, you who have kept us during the past week and invite us to come and worship with you this Sabbath hour. We ask as we ascend praises to you that your name will be glorified and you'll be pleased. Grant us your peace as we open your word. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now tonight, I would like to just talk a little bit with you on the subject, it's time to leave the nest. Really, what I'm talking about is to become more positive. I understand that uh, this time of the year, by, by the way, is um, graduation from school and students are coming out unsure of where they would end up, if they would have a job. Not only students, but we as older ones, we have our time with our negative thoughts and so I want to encourage you tonight to think positively. Let us turn our Bibles to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs, chapter 18 and verse 21. Now, just before I read, this is the time of the year I have suffered a little bit with allergy. So if I have to stop and cough or sneeze a little bit, don't you ever run from your television or your computer. Think I have COVID. No, I don't. That was just fun. All right. So let's turn to Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. And I read, death and life are in the power of, of the tongue, and uh, they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. 
Here ends the reading of God's holy word. One does not have to search far and wide to find negativity and pessimism in the lives of the people around us, or even sometimes in our own lives. Speaking about social justice, I could. Could talk about shooting. We just had one close by um, today. I almost got caught in the crossfire. I was right there, the only car on the street with about eight police cars. Could talk about that and live on it. Could talk about bad politics, corrupt, corruption in our government, or messed us up judicial system, or sluggish economy. We could talk so much about negative things in the world today. Today, complaints are common. And we hear them all around us. Every day, every minute of the day. Some of them are, I'll never get married. I will not get the break of promotion that I expected. I, my health is not improving, it's failing. I'm getting old. Or, I'm going to die. Some people are negative about things being done. It's not done properly. I could do it better. And these negative thoughts create a very toxic and corrosive environment in the head. If not dealt with, can cause sustained illness. There are so many negative people around. And clinical studies have shown that around 90% of the things we worry so much about have such negative feeling never actually happen. So we worry about things that never happen, that we thought should happen. Isn't that funny? Most of us, even as Christians, have gotten caught in this negative trap. Sometimes we don't even know how to get out of it. Although we know God's wonderful principles of promises to us, we find it difficult to apply them during our circumstances. We allow our minds to constantly feed on the negative and then and, 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 and no positive. And if you check our drug stores and were to check the amount of pills that we take because we can't sleep, the Western world, America, and even Canada, take more drugs to sleep than any parts of the world because we have such fear and negative feeling. Now, thoughts will lead to words which mold our attitudes and our attitudes in turn produce actions and those actions determine results. It stands to reason then we need to determine what kind of result we seek to accomplish in our lives. Is it negative or positive? Is it good or bad? Therefore, we must function accordingly and choose. A negative person sets undue limits and boundaries on himself and often gives poor counsel to others that amounts to defeat and nothingness. 
The way we package information affects us negatively or positively. Proverbs 18.21, death and life are in the top, the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. The tongue is a powerful thing. And we ought to be careful what leaves the mouth. A negative mind will never produce positive life. If you want to get anything in life, you need a solid framework to help you to get over the fear and challenges that you will encounter along the way to success. Difficulties is a part of life. See, life is a battle and a march. Focusing negatively on the mountain or the difficulties or the challenges we face will never bring it down. It becomes even higher and more impossible to climb if you think negatively. I think when you have a mountain, you should move to solution. If you worry about it, it will never move. By encouraging negative thoughts, you magnify the negative aspects of a situation and filters out all the positive ones. You see, positive and negative can't live in the same room. They don't drink from the same cup. And that's why it is encouraged that when we find negative friends, we have to move away gradually. Because we will become negative too. Furthermore, going today, today with negative thoughts constantly can weigh on a person, can weigh a person down, both physically and mentally. But you can train your brain to reject this type of behavior. If you want to live productive life, never live a negative life. Always think positive. Do the right thing, even when things are going against you. Think positive. I'm inviting you to change your posture and be a positive thinker. Positive thinking doesn't mean that you ignore life's less pleasant situations. Positive thinking just means that you approach unpleasantness in a more positive and productive way. In other words, always think the best is going to happen, not the worst. The health benefits itself that positive thinking provides is huge. A negative person is never relaxed. A positive person does. The health benefit includes greater resistance to illness. You'll see some folks live long. When you visit them, ask them, what, why did you why you think you're living so long? What's the secret? One of the things you will hear, I don't worry about nothing. Then you have psychological and physiological well-being. Better cardiovascular health and reduced risk of death from heart disease and stroke. Great resistance to illness. In addition, when you are a positive person, 
Your appearance glow in joyful look as you advance in age and spiritual maturity. You walk through life with greater confidence and poise. By doing so, you need no evidence to the world that you are a child of the King. I love to be around positive people, not negative people. Our daily challenges have a purpose. So we don't have to get excited when it comes. It has a purpose only if we were able to see them as opportunities. To do so, however, we must always look beyond what we can see and take hold of faith that guarantees the things we cannot see. Now, suffering, friends, is a natural experience of the Christian life. So if you became a Christian, if you have just come to the church or to Christianity, you came to suffer to be a part of the suffering with Christ. He said, take up your cross and follow me. One of the reasons why God allows us to suffer is not to punish us. If you suffer, it's not because you did more sin than somebody else. Suffering teaches us valuable lessons. No wonder the Bible said, the trying of your faith worketh patience. There are some eternal significance to suffering. Bear your suffering with grace. God is with you. You're not alone. And therefore, every time we face problems, instead of asking, why me? We rather ask, what's the lesson we must learn from this trial? Having a simple shift of focus gives us a powerful reason to stay positive in life. When we have things, this kind of thinking, all of a sudden, we can now see the meaning of our suffering. We don't suffer for nothing. We suffer because there's a purpose. It is for us to experience God's power in our lives and for, and for his name to be glorified. Secondly, we grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ when we suffer. As a matter of fact, we pray more when we are going through difficult times. When we have challenges to meet, we pray more. And therefore, we should count it not strange when we fall into diverse temptation. We grow more. We grow closer to Jesus. We read the scripture more. And so when these things come, think positive, not negative. Maybe I told you the story of the two gentlemen. They were in prison, locked away. They were lonely because they have nobody to talk with, the maximum jail. Both of them went to the window of the cell. And they looked out. One said to the other, what do you see? He said, well, I see mud. I see dirt. I see failure. He said to his friend, so what do you see? He said, I see stars. I can just see us walking out of this jail. 
I see us with better life. Oh, friends, that's how we must think. We can recall several men of valor who, regardless of their circumstances, look beyond their suffering and remain positive even unto death. Example, before John the Baptist was placed in a cauldron of hot oil, what if all that he could have seen was his, his skin stripped, his nose frying, his his eyes bulge. What if he could only see death? He would be a miserable man. But in his distress, he saw something else. He looked beyond the oil. He looked beyond his pain. And after his oil bath, I call it, because they placed him, by the way, friends, Hot oil burned worse than hot water. And could you imagine, I would imagine, he watched those men put that chondral on that, that fire and put wood and it was, the oil was, be, it was so hot, it was spinning and he had to go inside there. But he didn't think of that. After his oil bath, he went down there and just bathed himself nicely in that hot oil. The men who placed him there got afraid. They took him to the Isle of Patmos and let him loose like an animal. He did not even have a television, but God gave him a heavenly vision. And today we have the book of Revelation as the roadmap to prophecy. Second one, Jehoshaphat was faced with great tragedy. He did not murmur. He did not complain. He sought the protection and power of God. He prayed, Lord, I am just a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. He called a fast, then broke out into praise and worship, which landed him victory without drawing a sword. It depends on how you look at life. The third one in Acts chapter 5, should read it. Peter and his friends were preaching the gospel about Jesus in Jerusalem, also performing miracles. The members of the Sanhedrin and the high priest court martial him. They were about to execute him. Instead, they had a meeting and they planned to flog he and his friends, ordered them not to be killed but to be flogged. And so men, when they flog you, brother, they give you a good whooping. And they say, we're gonna beat you, but please do not go and preach anymore. They look beyond their problems. They didn't focus on the whip. You see, that type of beating was enough for them to give up, get out of town, get on their pity bat and run for their life. But even in their pain, they chose not to be negative. They chose fact over feeling. They remained positive. That caused the prison doors to miraculously open and they walked out. And if you read Acts chapter 5, 41 to 42 said, and they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Continue. That threat and flogging augmented their resolve to preach the gospel. Verse 42 says, and daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ is the way they look at their life 
and the ministry. How do you see your life? Do you see it in a positive way or a negative way? Friends, don't let little things get you down. Whatever it is, stand up like a brave. The Bible said the righteous is bold like a lion. If you are beaten by your friends, rejected by your friends, you're not loved, think positive. Your health is fading. You think you won't get better. Think positive. You have been waiting for a break that seems not to, coming, to be coming your way. Think positive. You're not hearing from heaven, just like Job. Think positive. Still think positive. You are more than conquerors. Because when you think God is furthest from you, he is the closest to you. Oh, friends, I wish you could. And I have to tell myself the same. We all go through difficulties. But we can't afford to let negative thinking dethrone us. The day Jesus was to be crucified, he felt the pain even before he went on the cross. He walked over 70 miles with a wooden cross on his back, weighed 300 pounds, plus the weight of the sin of the world. He died the eternal death that no man ever returned from. It was a grueling task. No man could withstand what he went through, but nothing could prevent him from his mission. He looked beyond his pain and suffering. He remained positive. And Hebrews 12 and verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, Paul said, who for the joy that was set before him. <coughs> It was the joy that was before him. He endures the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. In his humanness, he looked beyond his pain and saw the travail of his soul, and he was satisfied. Friends, one more time, I'm here to encourage you tonight. Never focus on your pain. Focus on your gain. No pain, no gain. Don't let positive thinking control or shroud your life. Therefore, if you want to become more optimistic and engage in more positive thinking, I have some tips for you. Firstly, Identify areas of your life that you usually think negatively. Whether it's work, your daily commute, your desires and aspirations. Pray and unleash the positive thinking into you or your life. And secondly, check yourself. Period, periodically, sorry, during the day. Stop and evaluate what you are thinking. If you find that you are, your thoughts are mainly negative, try and find a way to put positive spin on them. One of the deficits of a negative person is lack of humor. They don't laugh. They're just serious people. They carry long bony faces, clinched fists, ready to fight. Best thing you can do is surround yourself with positive people. People who are laughing, people who are enjoying life. Give yourself permission to smile or laugh, even at yourself especially during difficult times. Fourthly, instead of worry, 
change the trajectory of your thinking and focus on God, the sinner's friend, the one with the power to move mountains and obstacles, the one who leads one into positive territory, the one who tears down evil empires and destroys the enemy and sets the captive free. Think upon God. Second Corinthians chapter 10, 4 through 5. For the weapons of our warfare is not carnal, but mighty, through God to the pulling down of the stronghold, casting down imagination and, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Stick with Christ. What Satan, when Satan permeates our minds with negative thoughts, it's a spiritual battle of eternal consequence. You see, a stronghold is a defensive structure, a defensive attempt or any attempt. The devil takes on your life as a child of God will be met by the full weight of God's power. Why should you worry? He said, don't worry. Satan's stronghold will come crashing down like leaves in a mighty windstorm. Don't get all worked up. Don't get all frustrated. Don't throw the towel in. Don't quit. God created us to have joy, peace, to relax in him, to experience abundant life. But we will also go through rough patches, even though that is promises to us. There will be traps and snares. There will be booby traps, enough to break you and turn your world upside down. Whether they may be your own or my own making or simply put, upon us by the devil himself. Don't let it frighten you. Keep a positive attitude. God will put you back. God will put back the pieces. God will put back your broken pieces if you gave them to him. Even when you're broken, you don't have to get all excited. Example. When, a, when you buy a phone cover for your phone, you don't place it on to stop it from falling to the ground. You placed it on the phone to protect it from being destroyed when it falls. There is a possibility that you will fall. But you don't have to be broken because God is your cover, is your protector. Don't be afraid to be broken. Even if you're broken, he'll put you back together. And I told you about the nursery rhyme. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall and Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And Humpty Dumpty, all the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty together again. But God can. God is our protector. He covers us. He's our shield and our buckler. What you see as a mountain, God sees it as a molehill. Listen to this. Listen to me tonight. Out of the mountain of despair in your life of struggle is always a stone of hope. Let us not be downtrodden when we are down for the count. Keep a positive attitude. Keep hope alive. God is not dead. The tomb is empty. Take courage. Take cover in Christ. Remain focused. Remain in the fight till the final round. God has never lost. You're a winner already and you don't even know it. 
The righteous man falls seven times and rise again. Net negative attitude inside failure. But because God's throne is at the seat of your will, I command you tonight to release the power in you and rebuke the negativity, negativity and pessimism from your life. It is Satan's ploy to subordinate and subjugate your spirit of positive thinking. Don't let him spoil your joy. Don't let him burst your bubble. Rise up with a positive attitude and walk with your shoulder high. If you gave up too soon, how can you witness God's miracle or miraculous power making a way of escape for you? How can you see how God will solve your problem? How can you witness the way God will fight your battle for you? Stay until the final round. Think positive, speak positive, live positive lives. Your God is not dead. He is alive. Oh, friends, I hope that you have been blessed tonight. And I hope that you have gotten something to enhance your life. If we were to think positive things, positive things will happen to us. We have a God who is bigger than our problems. Trust him where you can't trace him. May God bless you. And now we'll break for a special music. Thank you. If you are sick, he will heal you. If you are sad, 
He will cheer you up. And if you have lost your way, He is a way maker, the truth, and the life. He said, I rather not the death of a sinner, but that all men will come and repent and turn to Him. He will give you life abundantly. Trust Him where you can't trace Him. Trust Him tonight. He's willing, able, and able to save you from the guttermost to the uttermost. There is power in whispering. Okay, so we're back. And um, to close tonight, I want to inform you that uh, uh, I'll remind you of our date next week. I will be on, on time. And please, if you have been enjoying the program, let me know in your chat, in the chat. Um, let me hear you. I know that many of you have been, but there are so many have been watching, but I would like to hear from you. If you'd like for us to pray for you, remember to put it in the chat. You don't have to put your name and, um, and where you're from. Just put, say, pray for me for so and so and so, whatever it is. And we will do so. We'll be happy to do so for you. I want to also thank you for your prayers and your support. I noticed that many of you are sending it to your friends. Somebody sent back a picture of mine and um, a sermon. And, and, and they wrote, somebody sent this to me. I didn't send it to them. So there, some of you are out there, you're doing that. And please subscribe and ask your friends to subscribe. So you can take these messages and share them with your friends. Ask them to subscribe and to tune in every Friday night, 9 to 10 p.m. Let us pray. Gracious, loving Father, tonight we learn much more of how we should think positive because you, have, you are not a negative God. You're a positive God. Help us that we may follow your example. Because even when things went against you, you continued to be God. You have never shown a, a negative attitude. Strengthen us because we're all guilty. We know what you can do for us, but we don't trust you enough. Give us that courage tonight. Bless my audience. Thank you for them. Thank you for their support. Guide us now, this Sabbath hour, in the worthy name of Jesus. Amen. Good night, and God bless you. If you would like to secure your copy of Pastor Herlock's book, Music and Worship, Contemporary Issues, please visit ourrevealed.org. And if you would like to purchase Pastor Herlock's newest CDs, please visit ourrevealed.org for more details.